there's this move right now. As you'll recall, back in 1976, Jude Wininski, in his two Santa Claus theory paper to the Republican Party, said, run up huge deficits when you're in power. Don't speak of it. Make it look like good times. As soon as Democrats come into office, start screaming about the deficits and get hysterical. That way, Democrats can no longer claim the role of Santa Claus giving out things like unemployment insurance and Social Security. Republicans can be Santa Claus, too, with tax cuts. Now, the, this has, the star of the beast theory here has reached the point where the beast is actually uh, getting whacked. Ken Blackwell on the line with us. Wants a balanced budget. He is the chairman of PassTheBBA.com, the Budget Balanced Amendment. Ken, welcome to the program. Good to be with you. This is the Ken Blackwell, who is the former Secretary of State of uh, Ohio. Former Treasurer of the State of Ohio, former Mayor of the City of Cincinnati, and former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations in charge of the Human Rights Portfolio. That's me. Thank you for coming on our program, sir. I have a Good couple. To be with you, sir. Great. I have got a couple of questions for you. First, let's talk about the budget, budget balanced budget. You want to take the budget back to eighteen percent. You want to take government spending. Right now, it's forty-one percent of GDP. You want to take it back to eighteen percent of GDP. Last time that was well, the, there's a there's a debate uh, on our side as to whether or not that that number should be eighteen uh, percent or twenty percent. But one of the things that we know from empirical uh, studies is that um, the optimum right size of government in terms of GDP, uh, government spending as a percentage of GDP, is uh, right around 20, 23%. Okay, the last um, time it was in that range was during the Great Depression. In 1931, it was 15.9%. It was 19% in 33 it was 18% in 36 I mean, the, you, you want to take us back to, to Great Depression levels? I, I, what I want to do is to get our economy growing again, and one of the things that uh, that we that we know is that uh, it, you know the the growth of government spending as a percentage of GDP has put us in a situation where we've done three things: one, we've practiced intergenerational theft, which is a moral crisis; uh, two, we've put our country at risk uh, from a national defense standpoint, given that uh, uh, our, our competitors uh, in the in, in global events uh, often is, is China. They're holding a lot of our, our debt, and we have stifled economic growth and, uh, and job creation. And so uh, what I want to do is put Americans, more Americans back to work. That means that we have to grow our economy, and in order to do that, uh, based on the opinion of both liberal and conservative economists, is that we're going to have to get spending under control. That's you know, Germany I'm... is doing just fine, thank you very much. They're the powerhouse of the world, arguably, and their their government spending as a percentage of GDP is, is a little over well, 50%. It's, it's interesting that you bring France up is doing just fine. They're almost 60%. Germany, Tom, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you brought up Germany. Germany has benefited from uh, benefited substantially from taking... Uh, a similar step uh, as the balanced budget about two years ago with a constitutional a mandate to balance its budget uh, by 2016. Germany now has an unemployment rate of 6.7 percent. So it's fascinating to me that you bring up but that's their first Germany of all their low unemployment rate is, they, is because they, they have a law they 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 required employers when during the recession to keep people on and pay them and the government paid the, the balance of their salaries. They put, they took people down to 80% work weeks, and the government paid the balance. It was called Kurzarbeit. I, I'm sure you're familiar with this. And, I'm, 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 very, and, I'm very familiar with it. And, and it and worked I, just fine. Think, you know, if, if there think, was, if there was no could. debt, I mean, this seems to me nuts. Here, here's why. If there was no debt, if, we, then if General Motors, AT&T, and individual households, if, if all of us had no debt, there'd be no mortgages, there'd be no bonds, there'd be no bank loans, there'd be a lot fewer cars, there'd be a lot fewer phones, there'd be a lot fewer homes. What is wrong with there being some debt? There's nothing wrong with there being some debt. We've had but debt since George that, Washington. Just, just, the, way, the, the, the way that this is structured now, uh, we're, we're eating away our growth potential. We're reducing... Uh, no, I, I understand that. That was Ronald Reagan's like, plan, well, well, and so, he's pulled it so off. We're, we're, we're talking, of Tom, Tom we're, if we can look for where there, there is consensus. I mean, you, you brought up Germany, you know, 
their situation is not identical to ours, but they got far from it. Like I said, they're they're, they're, but you want to take spending to 18 percent of GDP or 20 percent of GDP. And you say everybody says that's a consensus. Name one OECD nation, one fully developed nation that has GDP that's below 40 percent of uh, uh, the uh, government spending is 40 percent well, below. Let me, let me there are none. Di- let, let, let me put it to you in a different way. What you're suggesting is that we in become 230, Somalia. 200, Tom, in 234 years, this country and its economy has become the most prosperous uh, uh, economy in, in all of human history. We are not. It, yeah, well, uh, well uh, excuse me, we have become the most prosperous until Reagan came in along. all of human history. Right, until Reagan. What we want to do is put us back on a glide path uh, the, to so why not repeal the Reagan jobs. tax that cuts? Means that we have to we have to get government spending under control. But Ken Blackwell, you agree, know that if we repeal the Reagan tax sure cuts, you, I am sure Reagan as, tripled as the guess, national debt. If we as, simply as, repealed, as, as your guest, sir, I'm sure you're going to let me have. Uh, 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 an opportunity I'm, to make the case. I am not going to yeah. filibuster you if you will not filibuster me. How's well, that for well, a deal? Then let me let me just give you my theory. Then government spending is taxation, pure and simple. That taxation reduces output, employment, and and production. That's basic no, economics. No, that, that is not basic Instead economics one hundred and one. Government spending, when it goes into purposes, the pockets of people, Congress, Congress uses it. On okay, I thought you weren't going to filibuster me. Government business. spending, when it goes into the pockets of people, actually stimulates demand. And if you cut that off, you're going to cut off demand. You're going to throw us into a recession. Well, as I said, Congress is, uses money in terms of government spending and taxation. Uh, on bailouts for failing banks, unprofitable businesses, clash for clunkers, housing subsidies, and unemployment. All of things have stimulated double, the economy. It is a double whammy for our economy. They, they stimulated you, the economy. You can't raise taxes on people who work, increase what you pay people who don't work, and then expect more people to work. Okay, I, got, I have that a question for you. Sense. Okay, you, you, you made your point. I, I have a question for you. When you were, when you were um, the Secretary of State of Ohio in the 2004 election, is it true that you outsourced the counting of the votes to a company in Chattanooga, Tennessee, that also no, ran Carl Rove's website? No, it is. That, 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 is, that is total hogwash. So now, it was, is, it was done entirely in the, the state? Vote, excuse me. What is you asked the question? What was yeah. true is that the votes were counted not in a centralized fashion. Votes were counted at the county level. Eighty-eight mm-hmm. counties counted the the ballots. Okay, and okay. so there was so the so the company in Chattanooga that was handling GWB f- uh, forty-one or whatever it was had nothing to that do is with pure Ohio. Fiction. Pure that fiction. Pure fiction. Okay. Tom. I just wanted to get that. Uh, you know, I I I I'd read it so many to times. That question. That, I wanted to ask you, and really I thought you might want to answer that's it. Really focused on the economy, but okay. I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to debunk that nonsense. Okay. Well, you're on the record, and and I'm I'm I thank you for answering it straightforward. Um, we have just just a minute left. I uh, how's this how's this thing going? This thing to balance the budget and and cut our government spending down to twenty percent. Well, we're hoping that we will we we will have the requisite number of votes in in the in the House. As you know, we need two two ninety uh, by our count. We're up to about two two fifty. So that means that we have forty more uh, to to get in the House. We need sixty sixty seven, and we're at fifty fifty one fifty or fifty one. So we you know we we have uh, sixteen more to go. Yeah. Well, I no, have to say, what, I, that's I what politics is. this this, this is a matter of this scares the hell out of me. I think that you 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 guys will succeed in taking us back to the era of Charles Dickens, where you're going to have a few billionaires and millionaires, a very small middle class, and a lot of working poor if you pull this off. But I realize I think that we're see an American third century that is prosperous with people working and American exceptionalism still setting the pace. Okay, we'll let Thank you have you, the sir. last word on that. Pass the BBA dot com. Ken Blackwell, the chairman. Thanks, Ken. All right, thank you. Good talking with you.